From Minnesota is home to the United States' largest Somalia community. Thousands of Somalis were relocated to the state after fleeing civil war in their country. Most of them settled around Minneapolis and in an era being called Little Mogadishu. Salam Salomon and Abdi Mahmoud filed our story. Too often, young Somali Americans in Minnesota have made headlines for all the wrong reasons. A small number have fallen prey to the lure of drugs, gangs, and extremist ideology. But youth organizations in the state are trying to challenge all that. A group of 12 youth basketball organizations representing mosques around the Twin Cities held a tournament where young people were given the chance to build athletic skills and gain self-esteem. One of the players from the Arroda team, representing one of the mosques, and and won the tournament explained why it was so important. Today we have succeeded in winning the cup after beating at the finalist Umatul Islam Club. We had worked very hard for this and we are so excited about it. Minnesota is home to the largest Somali community in the U.S. with more than 20,000 living in the state out of a total of 80,000 across the country. According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, about a dozen people have joined militant groups in Syria in recent years, and about 22 men have been lured to join al-Shabaab in Somalia, dating back to 2007. Most recently, nine Somali-American men were accused of plotting to join ISIS. Minnesota federal court handed them jail sentences. Programs like the basketball tournament are geared towards providing extracurricular activities to fend off negative influences. A local organization behind the tournament, For the Youth by the Youth, says the impact of the competition is felt far beyond the basketball courts. The reason we started this program was when we saw what the youth are going through and how they were involved with gang fights among themselves. When we saw how they are suspected or labeled as extremists, we started to bring them together in order to prevent them from getting involved with drugs. We found a place where they can stay fit and stay busy and avoid negative influences. One of the players, Abdullahi Bare, agrees that sport can be a unifying force for good. This kind of tournament brings us together as brothers. We come together and we finish the games. We eat together and communicate as well. The basketball tournament is an annual event in Minnesota that has been going on for three years. For Abdi Mahmoud, Salem Salomon, VOA News. You're watching Africa 54, I'm Chamberlain Oso. Now to Egypt, where traditional watchmakers are determined to preserve their craft despite a drop in demand for their work. The timepieces they make were once highly cherished and won by Cairo nobility. Here to report. <laughs> In the ancient cobbled street of Khan Al Khalili Bazaar, Cairo's watchmakers, once the suppliers of choice to kings, carnals, and carabet stars, are now a dwindling band, keeping their craft alive for only a handful of tourists and art enthusiasts. <laughs> But every once in a while, customers, tired of the throwaway products of the digital age, come looking for the sense of history and permanence that an antique timepiece offers. Our customers here are bored of modern things as they have them in excess where they come from, because most of our customers are Europeans. So when they see these old watches that are still working, they like them because they bring their memories of their dads and granddads, and they like to own them for their children and grandchildren to inherit after them. Hussein, who works on old watches in the markets, became intrigued by the complexity of a clockwork at a young age and taught himself how watches work. I only work on old watches. I don't work on modern watches. Because the old watches are all about mechanism. A new watch consists of a face, hands and a battery. And the fault always falls into one of these categories. So whenever something doesn't work, one piece is removed and replaced by another. 
But an old watch is filled with many wheels, and every wheel has a specific number of teeth and has a specific thickness and height. So old machines are beautiful in their sound and the way they work, and they can last a hundred years. Nearby, another watchmaker's shop founded by a Bulgarian Jew during the colonial era is itself a relic of clockwork's golden years. This shop was built in 1907 by Salman Hanhayat, a Bulgarian who was living in Egypt, and he brought watchmaking and mending to Egypt. And of course, as he gained popularity, Egyptian politicians started coming to him, including King Farouk and the royal family, and he became the man to go to for the British army to make and fix watches. Some of Egypt's legendary musicians of the past were among the customers of the traditional watchmakers. For the craftsmen, the enduring quality of their handmade watches don't just tell the time, they stand the test of time. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Now be sure to watch Africa 54 on the VOA website at voaafrica.com. I'm Vincent McCore in Washington. Chamberlain has our last word today from Lagos. Thanks, Vincent. That's our show for this time. We will return next week. In the meantime, check out channelcv.com for all your local news, politics, and programming, and more. I'm Chamberlain Osor. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.